We're going to see what does this have to do with love? How does love work in this? How can I get love this Christmas? How can I show love this Christmas? Well, there are four parts I told you. And they're all, if, you, if anybody writes down, take notes, they're all going to start with the letter S. See, I told you this was going to look like a real sermon. <laughs> first of all, love, the first aspect of love that I want to show you is that love serves. Serves. One of the things the video showed us was this, this guy, Dustin, He's actually a local boy. We know some people who know him. Um, he served people, right? We see him playing his guitar for this young girl in the hospital, for the older, old folks. I mean, the old, who, what do you call that, nursing home? Assisted living. Assisted living facilities, if we want to get politically accurate and technically accurate. Love serves. It sees needs and it figures out how to fill them. There are people out there who are just miserable and they're going to be miserable no matter what, right? There are people who, they're miserable and they don't know why, but they need help, they don't know how to ask for it. We are big on, Widener is big on doing community service hours and those are great, but there's not so much as doing them because you have to do them, but doing them because you want to do them, because you actually like people and you love people and you want to make sure that they know that Jesus loves them. Jesus himself came down and says, what, uh, what was it? I'm trying to read my own handwriting. It says, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant. We read in the stories of John, in John chapter 13, where Jesus humbled himself and he served the people that were with him. He loved his men. He loved his apostles. And he washed their feet. He did things for people. And by the way, if you, and I always have to point this out. In John chapter 13, you realize Judas didn't leave the room until after Jesus was done washing people's feet. He showed love to everybody. He showed what the God of love is all about. The people who killed him on the cross, he ended up there saying, God, strike them all down. No, he said, God, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They haven't a clue. Jesus came down this earth to this, on this planet, not as a king as he deserved. He deserved to be born in the palace in Jerusalem. He deserved to be flowered, with, with showered with prizes and gifts and gold. And when he was born, he was going to be heralded by the entire world. That's what he deserved. But he came down and he humbled himself as a servant, as a little child laid in a feeding truck. And God has called us to live that way, to emulate Christ, to serve people. I think a lot of times we have this problem, we have a problem in America at least, and, 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 and Philly definitely, where people think we are entitled to things. We've got to love, you got to give me, feed me, serve me, let me get what I need. But serving requires us to humble ourselves and put other people ahead of ourselves. We were taught, we've been studying Ephesians for the past oh, semester in, in, in Logos. And in Ephesians, we've talked many times where it's like, well, let me jump over and read Ephesians chapter 4, uh, 15 through 16, where it says this. Rather, speaking to truth and love, we are to grow up in every way to him who is the head and to Christ. For in whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint which is equipped when each part is working properly makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. In love, build, or humble ourselves, serve others in love. It talks previously, it's in, in chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. It says, walk in a manner worthy of the calling in which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Patience, 
humbleness, gentleness, humility. we got to humble ourselves and think it's not just about me. It's about other people. Building each other up in love. Submitting to one another and serving not just the people in the church, but the people in the world who need to know Jesus. Our churches have gotten a bad reputation because because people condemn the world. What does it say in John 3, 17? He did not come to condemn the world, nor to judge it, but to save it. Showing people love and starting off by serving them, meeting their needs. We can change the world with love by serving people. And not demanding that they come to Christ, but telling them and, and, and demonstrating the servanthood of God. So yeah, love serves. So first S. The second S when we find in Philippians 2, 8 is that love sacrifices. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Other places we read, greater love has no man than this, that he laid out his life for his friends. Sacrifice. I'm not asking you guys to go kill yourselves for people. <laughs> I am not asking anybody to do that. I'm not saying, but what are we? What can we sacrifice in order to show somebody we love them? Time, you know, some money. You know, if somebody needs something to eat, you go and buy them something. Now, I can't afford to always buy somebody something to eat, but sometimes that's the sacrifice I'm called to do. Sacrifice not going to something because you want to do it, or you, but going to something else because somebody needs it there. Sacrifice. Oh, I don't like that word. <laughs> I don't like that word in America. <laughs> you want me to do what? You want me to put myself aside and go do something for you? No. We see that on a, a you know, everybody loves Raymond. I remember seeing an episode where his wife asked Raymond to do something that interrupted Raymond's idea of what he wanted to do. You can't do that. Sacrifice, you got to, you, you can't go play golf. We got to go do this with the kids because I'm going to go play golf. Not a happy family. The, the, the Varones are not happy people. I don't care. But it's a sacrifice. If we want healthy families, we want healthy friendships, we want healthy, we want to change the world, we want to show the world, we put aside ourselves sometimes and go and find out what other people need from us. It's been not time, money, maybe it's a sacrifice that new car for a cheaper car so you have more money to do something else for somebody. Love sacrifices, not just needlessly either. It sacrifices with a point. I mean, you can live a self-sacrificial life and not get anything and hide yourself from the world and you're not really loving anybody except you know you and God. You got, that's all you need, me and Jesus. We're good. But it's a sacrifice with a point. With a purpose. To show somebody else that you care. They may not even know what you sacrificed. They don't need to. They just know that you're there. So yeah. Love serves. Love sacrifices. Third S. <laughs> love suffers. <laughs> what? That's not in the Bible, what is it? Well, you know, it is. What is it? Uh, 2.14. This is where I have to stop on this one. Philippians 2.14 says, Do all things without grumbling. <laughs> all things without grumbling. I don't want to do You ever been asked to do something you don't want to do? And you sit there and the whole thing, you just say, I don't want to go clean the toilet. I don't want to go clean the toilet. Grumble, grumble, mother, you know what? You're clean the toilet. Right, you do it because you're asked to do it. It's not easy to not grumble. We jump into 
And but suffering is doing that's part of suffering. But then there's in Second Corinthians and First Corinthians thirteen where it says, "Love is patient." We've taken the word, we've taken that complex Greek word and turned it into the word patient. But I love the way that you know the King James version sometimes translates it as long suffering. <laughs> Long suffering. Great. Two words I don't ever want to put together. 